Welcome to our lecture online. Now in this example you can see that the, dis the distributed load on the beam has a parabolic shape to it. On the left it has a maximum value of 2000 newtons per meter, on the right 1000 newtons per meter. Notice that the vertex of the parabolic shape is at a point 4 meters to the right of A and 2 meters from the very end of the beam. The beam is 6 meters long. We're trying to find the moment at A caused by the load on the beam. To do that, again, we use our typical technique. We first want to find the total force of each of the segments and realizing that the area is representative of that force. Now, how do we find the area of a parabolic shape like that? To, to do that, you should realize that the area of each segment is equal to A times H divided by 3. Now it's A and H again. A is the distance from the vertex to the end. In this case, A would be the distance from 0 to 4 or 4 meters. H is the height. That would be 2,000 newtons per meter. So the area number 1, A number 1, is equal to A, which is 4 meters, multiplies times the height, which is 2,000 newtons per meter, divided by 3, which is equal to 8,000 divided by 3. So that would be the total force uh, contributed by this particular portion of the load segment, 8,000 divided by 3 newtons. To get the load contribution of this portion of the load, that's A2, that is equal to A, which in this case is only 2, H, which is 1,000, N divided by 3, that would be 2,000 divided by 3, and that would be newtons, 2,000 divided by 3 newtons. So that's how we find the force of those parabolic shapes or those parabolic load distributions. Now we need to find the x-coordinate of the centroid of each of those two load segments. To find the center mass of a load segment that looks like a paraboloid like this, that it would be 3a divided by 4 for the x-coordinate and 3h divided by 10 for the y-coordinate. Remember that is from the vertex. From this direction, this way, that would be 3a divided by 4, we need to then subtract that from 4 meters to make sure we get it relative to point A. So what we're going to do is we're going to find the centroid in this direction, this direction that would be 3a divided by 4, and then if we take 4 minus that, we get the particular centroid. 4 minus 3a divided by 4, which is 4 minus 3 times a, which is 4 divided by 4, 3 times 4 divided by 4, which is 1. Oh, that would be 3, I'm sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. And let me move this over just a little bit. That is equal to 1. So 1 meter from A is the centroid of this particular load segment. Doing the same for this load segment, this would be 4 plus, now we can go ahead and add it, 3A divided by 4, 3A divided by 4, this is equal to 4 plus 3 times 2 divided by 4. That's 1 half times 3. That would be 1 and a half time plus 4, which is 5 and a half. 5 and a half meters, I should put units down, that's meters and that's meters. 5 and a half meters from point A, that's where the centroid is for that particular segment. Okay, now we have the total forces of each segment. We have the x-coordinate of the centroids of each segment. Now we can find the total moment by multiplying this times this and adding to this times this. 8,000 divided by 3 plus 2,000 divided by 3 times 5.5 equals, we have a total moment of 6,333 Newton meters. Is that about right? That's about 2,000. That's about right in the ballpark. All right, now we can find the total force by simply adding these two together. 8,000 over, 8, over 3, 2,000 over 3, that's 10,000 over 3. That would be 3,333 Newtons for the total force by both contributions and the total moment. Now we can find the x-coordinate of the centroid. This divided by that, 6,333 divided by 3,333 equals 
and it's 1.9 meters, is the distance from A to the centroid. So now we can visually see what that looks like. The centroid is right about here. We have a total force contribution of 3,333 newtons acting at a distance of 1.9 meters away from point A. And then the total moment is equal to 6,333 newton meters, which means the moment at A in this direction to compensate for the moment caused in this direction by the total force acting on the beam. And so moment at A is therefore equal to a negative 6,333 newton meters relative to the moment caused by the load on the beam. Again, traditionally, we count counterclockwise direction as positive, clockwise direction as negative, but by definition, the way you have it here is I call a positive moment because of the load on the beam. The opposite moment is the compensating moment at point A. And that's how we solve this problem.